hell can this external 20 megabyte SCSI based hard drive is so light? What's in it? Well, let's go and check it out. When I received the 20SC in the mail, this is what it looked like. It had a logo spray painted on the top of the case. It was also engraved in the bottom left corner. There was a sticker on it. So presumably this had been used either in a score or some commercial setting that needed acid tags um, added to it. So I, I cleaned that up. I managed to get that mostly off with um, some isopropyl alcohol. And then I started taking it apart, revealing some very rusted shields on the inside. Now, ignoring the middle one, which belongs to an LC475, uh, you can see the bottom and top shield, as well as the metal bracket that houses the fan, as well as the SCSI ports and the SCSI selector button. Um, I used a rotating wire brush attached to a Dremel to get all of the rust off and then I simply spray painted it with some rust inhibiting uh, lacquer. Once all the metal pieces were clean and dry and the plastic housing had also been cleaned, I mixed up a simple epoxy mixture to glue the metal shielding back into the two pieces of the enclosure. supply. The main reason for that is that uh, in some uh, implementations of the SCSI interface prior to finalizing the standard, um, the bus power doesn't always work or provide sufficient power to the device. And so we'll keep this in here and actually hook it up to the SCSI 2SD device in case it does need the extra power. Um, I have mounted the SCSI 2SD on a little piece of um, foam so it doesn't make contact with the metal shielding to avoid it uh, from shorting out. So that will go in here and then I have this Molex adapter that allows it to draw power from the power supply if needed. I haven't opened the power supply yet to figure out um, if it needs any repairs done. I'm sure it has a bunch of capacitors in there that need to be replaced eventually, but it works fine for now. Yes, there is a risk it'll blow up at some point, but um, we'll deal with that at some point later. So I have the SCSI 2SD uh, hooked up to my Mac Pro um, using the micro USB cable and we'll jump over to the utility to get it configured. All right, my SCSI 2SD card is uh, connected to my Mac and I've downloaded the configuration utility from the CodeSource website. Um, I'll put a link of um, that in the description below. 
what you want to make sure is download the right version that corresponds to the version of your SCSI 2SD device. They are not compatible uh, otherwise. So I have a V5.2, version 5.2, and that's the utility that I've downloaded. So let's open that up. The utility is sometimes a little bit uh, tricky when it comes to accepting commands. So as you can see here, I'm clicking on file, nothing happens. There's a few bugs to be ironed out, but sometimes just uh, changing focus to a different window will fix that. Now let's um, load the settings from the device. I've already set that up before. I have an eight gigabyte SD card in here right now. And um, let's see what that looks like. Um, on the main settings, it is set up in SCSI 2 mode that will get you some slightly faster data transfer rates. And I've created two devices um, from the SD card. One is a two gigabyte SCSI device and the second one a six gigabyte SCSI device. So as you can see here, the first one, um, you uh, enable the SCSI target, you give it an ID, the ID that you want to have that uh, on the bus for this device. And I've picked hard drive, you can pick other types too, but I intend to use this as um, an external storage device. Um, we'll start storage in sector zero. And I'm picking two gigabytes for the size of the device. Now I have created this with the auto setting selected so it automatically based on um, the size I've chosen and the sector size, what the sector count uh, should be. Uh, so if it fills it in automatically, don't touch that. Uh, there's usually no need uh, to fiddle with those settings manually. And then on my second device, which is also enabled and has the ID2 also set up as a hard drive, um, I've given that a size of six gigabytes, so that should fill up the SD card. And the other two devices I have not enabled because I'm using the entire size of the SD card. Now, I could enable these two and then essentially have four two gigabytes each devices. Um, I've chosen to configure it like this um, so I can eventually boot an operating system from the first device and then use the second as mass storage for backups and other data transfer purposes. Now again, the thing to be aware of here is the start sector. Usually if you use the auto setting, it will pick the right one uh, based on the sector count from the previous device. So again, no need to fiddle with that. Now, once you're done with your settings and you're happy with them, uh, you would save them to the back to the device. So it writes the settings back to your SCSI to SD device and you can use it uh, in your Macs. In order to test the device, we'll hook it up to the Performa 475. We will just plug in the SCSI cable. We don't need power. Um, because this one should supply enough power through the bus. And the other nice thing is we don't need these Terminator plugs anymore. So let's power it on and see if it recognizes the device. I had to go back and reconfigure the number of devices on the SCSI 2 SD um, to, from two to three. The reason being that um, 
on 7.6, system 7.6, the HFS partition size is limited to 4 gigabytes, and I do have an 8 gigabyte SD card in there, so I changed it to 2, 4, and 2 gigabyte uh, device sizes, so I could use the entire one. Now, in order to initialize them, and I've already done this for two of the devices, we need the HD setup program, a patched version, uh, the link of which I will make available in the description. And let's pick the remaining one that I have not done yet. All you do is click initialize, and it will. Uh, create the file system, HFS, uh, format it, and then ask you for a name. we are. These are the three partitions on the SCSI to SD. And there you have it. A fully restored, cleaned, and updated external hard drive 20SC with a SCSI to SD card in it updating the total storage capacity from 20 megabytes to a whopping 8 gigabytes over three SCSI devices. Virtually silent, since neither the fans nor the power supply will be used on most devices if the SCSI bus provides enough power. And as practical as this version of the SCSI 2ST is, I just think this one, once I have the lid back on, looks a lot nicer and fits in with some of the machines like a Macintosh SE30.